was just stopping and I, I, she's like, we're live. And I'm like, okay, let me know when we're live. <laughs> what are you waiting for? More inspiration, Brandy. <laughs> um, hi there. How are you? <laughs> uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, you know, I haven't talked about this in a while. Tuesday, still the worst day. Monday begins the week, so there's loads of inspiration. Friday, the end of the week, who doesn't love that? Yeah. Thursday, close to Friday, hey, there's some inspiration. Yeah. Wednesday, it's even got its fun name, it's hump day, yay. Tuesday, what is it? Tacos. That's about the only good thing going for it. And I don't have the ingredients to make tacos, so that's not what I'm having for supper tonight. So in fact, you just made Tuesday worse, Brandon. I'm sorry. That's okay, I'll forgive you. Um, but the sun is shining. It's nice and warm. I'm surrounded by flowers. I'm working with brandy. So this Tuesday is all right. Um, so I hope everybody's house plants are doing good. I hope everybody enjoyed that yesterday. Uh, I know some people desperately uh, needed that reminder. Um, it doesn't hurt for me to look at things like that and be like, oh yeah, I've got things to do with house plants as well. Um, but we're gonna keep ticking along with outside. We will come back to house plants. I'll probably do some transplanting. Uh, I know people like to see that and we can discuss roots and stuff, but uh, we're going to focus. Mother's Day is coming up um, and uh, a personal thing that I love uh, and my mom loves too is uh, designing a planter uh, for Mother's Day. But uh, we're going to talk today um, about what to look for when designing a planter. A lot of times people come uh, with the idea on what they're going to do um, and they haven't planned it out. Um, and uh, no problem, that's why we're doing this, right? I, I don't wanna see people do that where they get home and they realize they've bought the wrong plants or whatever. So when we're designing a planter, okay, there's a few things before we even get to the plants, there's a few things we need to look for. And one of the main ones that we need is new markers. Yeah. We need to look at, now I did it in 3D. Woo! Uh, GA Kids 3D. 3D. There you go. I was trying to say TV 3D, but <laughs> anyway. Um, we need to look at the location. And the reason we need to look at that is what suits the location better. Round, a window box type one like this. Is it like a, a you know, on somebody's front stoop where maybe they don't have a lot of room, so you want to run narrow. Um, is it going to be viewed 360, so a round or a square will work? Is it going to sit up against a wall, which probably means a square one will work better? Um, what do we, or maybe that's very limited room and we're going to put up a, a hanging basket. That indeed is a type of planter. So what are we looking for with the location? Because that's going to decide uh, how we plant it. And then the other uh, one that we have to look for is viewing. So we look at the location uh, and we go, okay, in this location, a round planter is gonna be best, okay? So we go with our round planter, perfect. How's it gonna be viewed the most? Is it gonna be viewed the most from the street? Is it gonna be viewed the most from the back? Uh, is it gonna be viewed most from an upstairs window, somebody looking down? Is it gonna be viewed most from a window and you've got a window box and that's sitting outside? So all of these have to come into consideration because when we're building a planter, uh, what we're looking to do is it has a construct. Um, we want height and we want things, and we'll get to that in a second, where we need to know, and, and until we know how it's gonna be viewed, which location it's going in, we can't quite get there. And then another thing um, that we really need to talk about um, are what plants go in. So this again ties into location, but because it's its own point, I'm gonna write it down separately. Exposure, okay? So it's great saying, oh, uh, I want to, um, you know, fill this plant uh, with begonias, uh, but then you find out that it gets sun for 14 hours a day. The begonias can live, but you're going to be watering it four times a day, trying to keep them cool. A lot of times they'll start getting crispy. They really don't want that. They'd like to be in the shade. 
So you may have to adjust the type of plants you need. So if you're building a planter for your mom, it's a good idea to know. Not everybody knows the name of plants. Not everybody knows sweet alyssum, geranium, um, creeping jenny. Uh, people don't know. I was still really looking for that one. That's why I paused. I could name the others, but I, I always like to name this one because yeah. my wife's name is Jenny. Creepy Jenny. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's why I always got <laughs> it. Plus, I do like it. I like the yellow leaf. And in Montreal, this grows as a perennial and you use it as a ground cover and you can walk on it. So, because the correct name is Lysomarcha, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as well. No. So, you want to look for the exposure. And once you know that, you want to think about the color scheme. So uh, people come in uh, and they may go, oh, marigolds, okay? And we've got some marigolds right here, go great with the bacopa, a nice trailing plant. But not everybody likes yellow and orange. So you may go, oh, this will work great, they're hardy, this will do it. And you put it in and they're like, oh, not really my colors. So don't get hung up so much on the type of plant because again, you may go, oh, it has to be begonia, but it has to go in full sun. If you go with a color scheme, it is a lot easier to find the flowers. And I can promise you this, what I have learned is people may have a plant they like, absolutely. Um, but if it's between the plant they like or a color scheme, color scheme nearly always wins. Uh, you may not be able to get the type of plant because of exposure, might be limited, maybe we don't have any, the weekend you come in, uh, they got sold out, whatever, you know, we bring in tens of thousands, okay, but if that's a popular color or somebody comes in and takes all the white, you might go, oh no, they have no white geraniums, I'll go with Sweet Alyssum, I'll go with Pocopa, and you can, you can substitute colors a lot easier than you can plants. So we look at all of these factors first. And that's going to decide uh, which direction we're going to go in uh, for our plants. So for the sake of ease, let's say uh, our location uh, is on somebody's back deck. Very simple. We can all identify with that. Everybody knows what a deck looks like. I could be a back porch even. But that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so we're not going in a garden. We're not going on a uh, walkway. We're going to go on a deck or a stoop. Viewing. We're going to say this is going to be viewed as you walk up to the deck. So you see it head on, okay? And it's gonna go up against the wall. Exposure, not really gonna matter for the sake of this, um, but let's say, let's say sun and shade, gets a little bit of both, make life easier. Color, I'm not even gonna choose that because I don't wanna direct you guys in any way, shape or form. Okay, so color, they like every color under the sun, uh, much like my mom. My mom, and I get it, uh, it might be where I get it from, you know, you see somebody and they might be wearing like pink shoes, red pants and an orange shirt. And you're like, holy moly, that clashes. You take those colors right here, actually. Orange uh, or yellow, even uh, pink, purple and red and put them in a planter. It works. It looks amazing. So uh, I don't find in a garden that colors clash. I find they all complement or contrast each other perfectly. So I'm not going to get hung up on color because personally, uh, I, the more the merrier. Fill it with color. So what we're looking at now, okay, so we go, okay, great. We know what we've got. So we're dealing with a square planter, okay? We know it's going to go up against the wall. Uh, so let's say this is our wall here, okay? This is our deck. Those are the stairs very small deck. I wouldn't suggest walking up those stairs, you might fall. As you can see, there's a reason I became a horticulturalist and not an architect. Yeah. <laughs> One, why is my planter levitating? Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we're gonna run out of time. So now, what we wanna think about are the three key elements, which is the thriller, easily remembered. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one for this. The filler, Oops, I spelled it wrong. And the Ben Spiller. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, thriller, filler, and spiller. Very simply, all that means is the thriller is something big and bold, either in the middle if it's viewed 360, but in this one, it's at the back. So we want something really tall here. 
something that people are going to go, oh, wow, look at that, the feature plant. Then in between that, we want our filler, something that's going to bring color, something that's going to bring texture. Uh, pansies, violets are always a good one to use. They're going to come up like that. And they're smaller. So you can see now we're going to a height advantage. We're going uh, down as it goes. Then you want a spiller. So you want something that's going to cascade out. Sweet alyssum, creeping jenny, something like that. And these are our trailers. So now you can see that we've textured it and we've layered it. As somebody comes up our stairs, that's how they're going to see it. And that's how we've built it accordingly. If you do a round planter, okay, and you're gonna put it right in the middle of a wall, right in the middle of a patio, something like that, then all you do is you do your thriller right in the middle, your thriller, and then you do your filler all around it, and then you do your spiller in a few key parts, allowing it all to fill out. And the great thing uh, about a round one um, is that that can also be viewed 360. It doesn't matter what side you come at it from, you're going to see the same perspective. If you do one like that, uh, you may find you need to rotate it because if it's sitting like this, but your sun is only coming this way, your um, spillers on this side may not get the sun. So every day, every two days, rotate. That's it. One like this that you're building against the wall, you're going to build it knowing that your exposure is primarily coming from this way. So that's how we do it when we look at a planter. Okay, we look at all of those considerations. Um, it's not just a scattergun approach. So it's, it's relatively easy if you know uh, what somebody wants, where they want it, color scheme, that kind of thing. And then that's how we build it. So tomorrow we're gonna build a planter. Uh, I haven't decided yet what I'm building. Uh, if I'm gonna build a herb, every year I build Jenny, uh, a planter, uh, and I call it the teapot. And I put mint uh, and lemon balm and chamomile and lavender in it. Uh, and she loves it. You got all of that gorgeous stuff growing. You can use the herbs, then you can dry them and you can make your own teas. Uh, some people do, um, if you love salads or Italian food, you can do an Italian planter. For my mom, I will do just flowers uh, and that'll work. And we're gonna give it away. I'm not gonna give away this one. You have to earn this oh, one. My goodness, Colin. I was working on that since last night. That's <laughs> why I'm tired. For a while. Um, but we are gonna do a planter tomorrow. I am going to build it right here. Then we're gonna let everybody have a chance to win it, to give it to their mums. And I don't even care if your mom hasn't seen this, go ahead and take credit. Yeah. I don't care whatsoever. Be like, I built this, okay? And I'm, I'm down with that, fully endorsed by me. So have a great Tuesday, everybody. Enjoy the sunshine. We'll see you tomorrow when we get our hands dirty. So always a good day on GA Kids TV. Bye, everyone. Bye.